Hello everyone, back to you into today's first video. Uh, we're having a look at the ECODF 30 day model for today's first video. Um, you're going to look at temperature and precipitation anomalies for the next four weeks, and that's going to take us pretty much to the end of uh, February, just towards the beginning of um, March. So that's what we're doing for today's first video, looking at temperature and precipitation anomalies for the next four weeks for the UK and the rest of Europe as well. Uh, with the E7 day 30 day model and then later on we'll be back with your week to 10 day video updates including all of the regular features i'm running very late today so uh sorry about that week 10 day video update will be quite late this afternoon uh right so at the hungarian met office to this uh for this big thank you to them for supplying us with the charts going to start off with the week one temperature anomaly it's week six for our forecast period now we have some colder than average temperature anomalies somewhere in Europe and we haven't seen this for a really long time but down here in the southeastern corner of the Mediterranean so kind of like Greece over to uh, Turkey yes it is a little bit colder than average there and also some parts of western Russia have gone close to average and some parts of eastern Europe have also gone close to average so generally it's cooled down a little bit in the east in the week ahead, taking us from the 3rd to the 9th of February, week 6 for 2020. Generally, it is a little bit cooler on that eastern, southeast side of Europe. However, most parts of Europe are still significantly uh, mild and average. So we've got Scandinavia here and northern parts of Europe, seeing temperature anomalies between now 3 and 6 degrees above average. UK and Ireland, 1 to 3 degrees above average. France, 3 to 6 degrees above average. Spain and Portugal, 3 to, three to 6 degrees above average there. So overall, northern, western parts of Europe are uh, still significantly mild than average. It is a little bit cooler, though, in the east in the week ahead. Precipitation-wise, a fair amount of dry weather around, uh, actually. Where it's coolest, it's also wettest in this far southeastern corner, kind of like from a black sea towards Turkey. Anyway, some parts of Greece do look a little bit drier. Then for the rest of the Mediterranean, it's largely... Uh, a dry of an average scene, especially around Italy and into the central bowl of the Mediterranean. And going further northwards, we find that uh, these northern and northeastern parts of Europe are just a little bit drier than average. And then we've got Central Europe uh, actually looking rather wetter than average. Some eastern parts of France, through southern Germany, uh, into the south of Poland. Uh, those areas do look a little bit wetter than average. Going further northwards to Scandinavia, uh, we find that Norway and Denmark are a little bit wet and average, Sweden a bit dry and average. So you see how it's varying from area to area for the UK and for Ireland. We've got west part of Scotland looking uh, rather wet, southeast parts of England looking rather dry. Then um, moving through to week seven. Uh, for the year, of course, it's week two for our forecast period, and we're back in business with those very significantly warmer than average temperature anomalies. So back they come in the east and the northeastern part of Europe, so western Russia into the far east of Europe. We're six to ten degrees above average through those areas. Then through Scandinavia and most of central and western Europe, we see temperature anomalies significantly warmer than average at three to six degrees above average. Most parts of the Mediterranean are looking uh, warmer than average as well. The cold and average temperature is being pushed over towards the Middle East. And um, then up into the northwest, you've got Ireland and the UK, uh, close to average there. So for England and Wales, we're around what, three degrees above average. For Scotland and Northern Ireland, actually we're around average through there. So uh, Ireland, uh, public and Northern Ireland and Scotland. Uh, has the coolest uh, anomalies to average, uh, really, for most parts of Europe that week. Um, the 10th to the 16th of February. But most parts of Europe are looking significantly more on average. And also much wetter uh, as well. So this is a precipitation anomaly from the 10th to the 16th of February. Very substantially wetter than average across northern, central and western parts of Europe as well. Um, so quite a wet week coming up, if this is right. Uh, through southern Europe, it looks drier though. Mediterranean generally coming out on the driving average side. So presumably we've got quite a lot of high pressure here reaching through southern parts of Europe and then lots and lots of low pressure across northern Europe with the jet stream uh, going across northern parts of Europe as well. And um, then we've got uh, week 8 for 2020, week 3 for our forecast period for 17th to 23rd of February. Same old, same old, mild average temperature anomalies, particularly for these northern, central 
and um, Western and also eastern parts of Europe. So all of this area just here having temperature anomalies between 3 to 6 degrees above average. One or two areas across the eastern Europe and western Russia still um, 6 to 10 degrees above average out in the west. Either UK, France, Spain and Portugal were around 1 to 3 degrees above average. It's another very mild week coming up there for week 3. Precipitation anomalies. Uh, wet and average in the far north of Europe. So again, for Scandinavia, for parts of Scotland, above average uh, rainfall there. Going further south across western and southwestern some parts of Europe, it's drier than average. So um, France, Spain, Portugal, most parts of the Mediterranean as well, look drier than average. Eastern Europe is around average for their um, precipitation only, or has no signal. Again, I suspect we've seen lots of high pressure across southern and southwest parts of Europe with plenty of low pressure and the jet stream as well up to the north as we go from 17th to 23rd of February. And then finally, we reach week 9 for 2020, week 4 for our forecast period. Uh, takes us from the 24th of February to the 1st of March, and the mild fest goes on. Uh, this time, mild of an average temperature is kind of across the far north, northeast of Europe. So it does look um, very mild there, around 3 to 6 degrees above average. Otherwise, we're close to, or a bit above average, most places up to around 3 degrees above average anyway. Although some parts of France and then the central basin of the Mediterranean is near normal. Again, very little sign of anything colder than average coming up uh, in the next four weeks, really. And then finally, precipitation-wise, it looks a bit wet and average across the extreme northern part of uh, Scandinavia. So parts of Norway, a bit above average for precipitation. Elsewhere, looks pretty dry, especially in this western, southwestern part of Europe through Spain, Portugal and France, and then through much of the Mediterranean. I think overall, most parts of Europe are averaging a bit drier than average there. As we reach the final week of February, of course, the final week of winter 2019-2020. Right, so that's it for the ECMD 30-day look. A bit of a short one uh, today because we're running very late, so I've got to get this one pushed out and then get on with a week to 10-day. Um, so that's how it's looking anyway. Basically, it's the same story as been all winter. Most parts of Europe looking very mild in the next four weeks, particularly across the northern and eastern parts of Europe. Although this week is a bit cooler in the east of Europe, and I'm not sure that was forecast, actually, by the ECM uh, last week. So how well this model is performing, we, uh, we'll have to wait and see. But anyway, its overall forecast is for significantly mild and average conditions, not just for the UK, but for most parts of Europe as well, in the... Um, in the next four weeks, taking us to the end of February. Right, we're back later on this afternoon with your week 10 day video update. Come back for that then. That's all for now, though, and thanks for watching.